Well, my baby works in a hot dog stand I'm making them hot dogs as fast as you can Up steps the cat yells, don't be slow And get me two hot dogs ready to go Hot dog! She's my baby Welcome to our final episode from Chapter 6. And in this episode, we're going to look at what are the three biggest concerns going into the future. And the first one is managing our ecological footprint. Now, on page 173 in your book, you're going to find a really, really long definition of ecological footprint. I do want you to go and read it, but I'm going to give you a simpler one right here. Think about an ecological footprint as how many resources provided by the planet do we need to support every single human that we have here on Earth. According to a study in 2007, to maintain the standard of living that humans had in 2007, it would take 1.5 planet Earths to maintain that standard of living. So, in other words, humans currently are using resources at a faster rate than the Earth can replenish them. And if we maintain that rate, then you're looking for societal, governmental, and economic collapses. So throughout the 21st century, we need to be able to find a way to make our ecological footprint smaller. So in other words, we need to use more renewable resources. We need more sustainable development. And we may just have to use less and maybe not so much fossil fuels. Um, maybe we're going to have to recycle more really some some common sense. And so if we play our cards right, we might be able to use make our ecological footprint footprint a little bit more manageable. Another problem that we have is overfishing. A lot of the the people on this planet are going to live on a coast. They are going to live on a river, they're going to live on a pond. They are, are on a, on a big lake, think of the Great Lakes, and they're going to have to stop fishing so much. We have some some tons of fish out there in the ocean that we've pretty much essentially hunted to extinction. So I want you to think about the uh, deadliest catch that you find on the Discovery Channel. And the Discovery Channel, uh, that show, you'll notice that they have a certain crab season. They have catch limits and they uh, have a maximum yield or harvest that they can have. And that's all designed so that we do not overfish the crab so that every year there's more and more crab that they can get. So we're, we're trying to use sustainable development. Another thing that you can come across with overfishing to help uh, alleviate it would be aquaculture. Talked about that in a previous screencast, um, where you basically have fish farms. And in certain species, you can just decide, we're not going to fish those guys for a while because we've almost made them extinct. And that's pretty much how we treat whales. All right. Now, the third and final biggest issue is going to be global climate change or global warming. And that's the biggest thing that we need to address during the 21st century. Since the Industrial Revolution, we have been spewing uh, carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels into the atmosphere. And that's enhancing the greenhouse effect. And so we're starting to see a relatively rapid climb in global temperatures. And it's really began to take off in the last 20 years as we have South American, Asian, and African countries becoming more and more industrialized. And so we're spewing even more carbon dioxide. But we're going to cover more of this in more detail later in, the, in, the, in our screencast here. So managing our ecological footprint, controlling overfishing, and dealing with global climate change. Those are the three biggest things that we have in the future. All right. Another thing we got to keep aware of is ozone depletion. And this is actually a success story. The ozone layer is an area in our atmosphere 20 to 50 kilometers above the Earth. So it's pretty high up there. And ozone, if you look over here in this picture, ozone is a very bizarre uh, oxygen molecule. Normally, oxygen is found with the formula of O2. So you have two oxygen molecules uh, covalently bonded together. Ozone is a somewhat unstable molecule that's three oxygen molecules connected to each other. And what happens is, is that as UV light from the sun hits ozone, that, that light is absorbed by these ozone molecules. And so even though if you look up here, there's like four rays of UV light hitting the earth, but because of ozone, only one gets down, okay? And UV light is important because it's a carcinogen. It causes DNA damage, which can lead to cancer, specifically skin cancer. 
<clears throat> now, uh, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, when we had aerosol, aerosol cans, I want you to think of spray paint and uh, hairspray. Uh, they use uh, CFCs, which stands for chlorofluorocarbons, as a propellant. Well, these CFCs, as you sprayed your hairspray or your uh, spray paint, uh, it would be released into the atmosphere. And the chlorine would break off and it would bond to the ozone. Well, that makes the ozone less effective. So when you have less ozone, you have more UV light coming down, which would increase skin cancer, et cetera, et cetera. So during the 1970s, uh, it was banned the use of chlorofluorocarbons. And what we expect is by 2050, this hole in the ozone layer that you see over Antarctica, it should close up. So this is an example of when humans recognize a wrong and they take the effort to fix it, we can actually improve or undo any negative impact that has been on the, uh, on the ecosystem. All right, global warming. Okay, global climate change or global warming is one of the biggest issues that we have. And as I said earlier, over the last 200 years, due to the industrialization of the world, we have been adding carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, and we're starting to see the uh, average temperature of the Earth rise. And it's really been increasing rapidly for the last 20 years as we have more developing nations becoming um, uh, obviously more developed. All right. Now, one of the fears that we have with global warming is that the polar ice caps will melt, and that will cause coastal flooding. And as I said earlier, many cities are along the coast, and along the coast, you're going to find uh, that these cities are going to flood because there's a lot of water trapped in these polar ice caps and these glaciers that you would find in, say, Antarctica, uh, Iceland, and Greenland, or mainly more Greenland than Iceland. Okay? Now, uh, what this would cause is some economic impact, some societal impact, and obviously could be governmental because when society is unrestful, is a freaking, is having unrest, and when you have economic issues, that affects your government. Now, these rising temperatures will also affect weather patterns, and we're starting to see some of this. Think of Superstorm Sandy that hit the Northeast. Think of some of the blizzards over this winter. Think of how we can have some really hot and dry times, especially with the Midwest, uh, the, the plains part of the United States, having a, a drought at this time. And, and in last summer, even we had an extended period of July and August as being a drought. And these are all the effects of global warming. So we're going to need to find a way to use sustainable development to cut down our carbon dioxide use. So that's going to end this episode. So until the next time, we'll catch you on the flip side.